Whitey team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to, well, something different, but also a uh, quantum break. So this isn't necessarily the way format's going to be going going forward. That would be an interesting experiment. It's more that uh, I was up late, probably a bit late to be talking into a microphone. I feel bad for my neighbors playing uh, this. And, uh, and I thought, oh, bugger it, I'll just record the footage and then maybe I'll do some sort of voiceover commentary rant after the sort of fact. So let me know what your thoughts are around this. Who knows? This could be a big hit or this could be a big bloody miss. Um, anyway, so Quantum Break. Quantum Break is a really cool game. It's the sort of the, the forgotten Remedy game. So if you're not across that, Remedy are pretty famous for doing um, the, the first Max Payne. So they did Max Payne 1 and 2. Uh, Alan Wake, uh, another sort of sleeper hit, I go. I guess it's gotten cult following, but Control is their most recent and definitely most popular one. But in between all of that, you had this, Quantum Break, which was sort of trying to push boundaries narratively. Um, they have like a sort of TV sitcom baked into it as well. So in between levels, you sort of sit through a live action uh, not bad production sitcom. Um, it's interesting. Some people, it's a big miss. Uh, I kind of appreciate it for at least really trying something different, which is kind of unusual for me. If you've tracked, like I, I am, I'm just becoming more and more curmudgeon-y as the years go by uh, about the poor writing being shoehorned into modern gaming. We don't really care about your crap self-insert fan fiction, you loser. Go and write for Netflix. I'd rather play a video game with zero story. And I know I'm not the only one. Unfortunately, we're being pushed to that. Um, but my point is that this is doing some really unusual stuff, sort of genre molding of, uh, or melding, sorry, of uh, television and, and game. And like I said, I can't help but appreciate it. I, I think it's not bad. It's cool. I, I wouldn't want to see it be the way all games were done, but I appreciate that it's a, it's a risk. It's different. Um, and, uh, and some people just aren't going to like that at all. Um, but it's kind of cool. It, it's worth noting that it's there. Uh, but I, I recall at the time it was a huge turnoff for people. And I was sort of like, I don't know. It's different. It's just good to see bigger companies taking risks. Um, anyway, at the core of this game is sort of like a sci-fi time travel mystery. I don't really want to go and spoil too much of it, but it's really, it does what a good sci-fi gets right in, t in storytelling, which is it grounds it uh, in, a, in a sort of reality. It makes it the, the sort of hard sci-fi, like it's not super high fantasy bloody Harry Potter's throwing laser beams and shit like that, right? It's mostly just time travel and, and something goes wrong and it's about unfucking that, that something, right? But it's grounded and it's very much helped by, well, in one part, all the character models being modeled off real actors. And though there's a lot of uncanny valley in its aging, it's still not bad. But what I would say um, is uh, sort of apparent, especially in Control, if you've played that, is the grounding um, of the architecture and the world design that Remedy does. I find that, that that actually goes a long way to the point where I was musing when I was playing it last night. I was thinking, wow, it's it made me realize that I don't particularly care whether the character models are good or bad or crap or whatever. You can give me 2020 polygonal characters, but if you give me a really amazing environment, because that's a lot easier to pull off, I would presume, having a look at even this game, like th this, these environments look almost real. And if you play Control, now Control, while it's very much um, set in a brutalist architectural setting, which I don't mind, you can look into it. It's a whole interesting thing, but I did a career in the military, so I'm used to bloody brutalist structures because that's how it always is. Big concrete slabs. But funnily enough, it, it looks hyper-realistic, like a, a ahead of its time. And I think that's because it's slabs of concrete for the most part. Like it's probably not as difficult. Um, like I don't want to take away from their efforts, but as maybe making a fantastical forest or something. Um, but you can see from this game and Control, Control especially, the environments almost look real. It's actually really insane how good they look. Um, and I fi found myself because... I don't know how the eyesight and the human mind and all that works too much. Uh, mind works poorly, but I find that 
whatever's going on with your peripheral while you're running around and focusing because you're not really looking at the you're not really looking at your character i suppose you're looking where you're aiming your gun um in the slow parts you're looking at deep things on a desk and all that but when you're running around there's, there's something going on with your peripherals and i find that um having these outrageously realized and grounded environments that look almost one-to-one -one real world that you're never really focusing on but they're always in that sort of peripheral vision area. It, I think that adds to the immersion on a level that no one really addresses or talks about. So you can have your unusual uncanny valley things. And, and granted, they will take you out of the game because you're forced to look at the dude delivering dialogue. Right. Um, so I, I can sort of understand that that could be jarring because it's front and center and it's like, look at this thing now. But for the most part, um, like I was I was actually really gobsmacked and it made me think back to control, which I played a lot of last year, which you should check out as well. Um, yeah. And I, th I think they're doing something that no one else in the industry is really doing is that they're building these environments built in these facilities that are kind of boring, like in real life. But in a way, uh, they're easier to realize and create an immersive, grounded experience. Anyway, I know I'm fixated on that, but that was my main takeaway playing it. The story's cool. The story's fine. Uh, what I would say, again, because writing is such... A, actually, I will say before I get onto it, the gunplay is, is fucking really good. It holds up really well. It's very, um, you know, kid in a playground. They give you like slow time and freeze time and a dodge with a bullet time sort of aim for a second or two after the dodge. And it all just feels run and gun smooth and very power fantasy and just tight. It really is. Um, yeah, I, I noted that at the time as well. Um, but what I was sort of saying uh, uh, around sort of narrative instruction, um, and I won't go on my usual rant too much, but so many writers these days, like I said, it's a vehicle for their self-insert bullshit fanfic, you know, I had a hard time growing up and I need to try and tell my story. You know, that sort of crap. And it's as played out as zombies or World War II games. What's cool about this is front and centre – is the sci-fi story, right? Okay, we have this time travel machine uh, and then we're going to build around that. What's going on? They don't even get into the hard science too much, even though it's all quite hard science. Like they don't go into the specifics. But on the one side, you got your, you got your protagonist in the middle who's a bit of an everyman, your, your Jerry Seinfeld, right? He's kind of just boring, just there for you to see through that window. And then you've got the, your, your main sort of mate that's running the experiment and he's a bit more of a risk taker. And then you've got your brother who has um like a, a troubled past so he's sort of like a bit of a black sheep but he's the one pushing back saying hey this is a terrible idea for an experiment my point is that this is a sort of emergent story construction all right so whoever wrote the story they started at the core and said let's create this interesting time travel thing let's go okay well what are probably the two first sides of the argument which is like maybe we shouldn't fuck with time and maybe we absolutely should and then we'll build some characters around there and it sort of flows on from there it's this i, I don't have the words to describe it because i'm not stupid enough to take like a four-year degree in basket weaving slash um you know story writing and construction but the the way that it seems to manifest to me is that they create an interesting concept at the core and they build on that and the characters in a way like roots from a tree evolve in the design process whereas i think the fault of a lot of modern writing is that they do it back to front they have this idea of a character that maybe they relate to or something they see themselves in and then they want to try and i don't know show the viewer the struggles and the feels of their character again it all seems very selfish that's this is how it presents uh, from the view of a consumer, is that we see so much writing these days. They're more interested in trying to tell you how you should feel about a certain character and just focusing in on their way through life and the way that they see things, as opposed to creating just a really interesting story, a concept, a thriller with characters that just happen to be going through it. Um, that you're not supposed to strictly identify with one-to-one. -one. You're not supposed to say, oh, that guy's got the same fucking eye color as me, so I must have the exact same perspective as him. And it's more focused on just an interesting story. Anyway, so I think it's really cool. And I see my timer ticking over, and I've already been sitting here for bloody 10 minutes just talking about random things from this game. Look, I'm going to put this up. 
because it's not exactly a brand new release of a game, but it's a cool game. You should check it out, put it on your wish list, whatever. I know some people, in like, if you've made it this far, I'll just tie off. I know some people enjoy me when I rant on stream and all that sort of stuff, and I can pull a thread and I can talk the leg off a fucking chair. Um, so if you feel that what we've done right here might be an improvement, or it might be a really bad miss and you fucking hate it and you never want me to do this again, but, you know, and not that I need to tell you not to hold back. It's the amount of you pricks that say naughty, mean, mean, hurt my feelings, comments. Uh, you know, it's not like that's going to stop you. But on the other side of it, if this is something that you like, you know, get on your keyboard and let me know. I'd appreciate it. Anyway, this game, Quantum Break, very cool. Check it out. Highly recommended. Uh, might just leave it there for the time being. I'll catch you guys on the next one.